And always do what we been want to do. A little scarce tonight, yeah. It's, the story has really been New Kirk Precinct, so. Uh, Dessel1234 saying I'm five. Well, okay, just kidding. I was going to say, dude, if you want to get in on the show match, hit me up. Uh, but then he threw up the just kidding. Oh, we got gotcha. you. That is a good segue, though. If you guys know any GMs that want to participate in an opportunity to win um, 10 bucks, send them our way. We try to feature new players each week, uh, but there's so many, you know, there's only so many GMs. So if you know anyone that wants a chance at a couple dollars, send them our way, man. We love showing new people uh, on the nights. Anyway, let's get straight into it because it is GMs and we could have a fast game. Uh, our player from Revo.gg in the bottom right hand corner of the map, um, it is. Uko. And his opponent in the bottom left of the map, representing four Protoss from D Life, it is Annihilator. D Life hype, by the way. They won the team league all together. That's pretty badass, if you ask me. That is badass, man. Congratulations again to them. Let's see what uh, Annihilator can do. Maybe they'll have an incredible night. Uh, you'll have, you know, somebody winning the Nidus show match, winning all in the Nidus clan war, man. Just winning everything tonight, dude. It's D Life's right. night. Uh, yeah, let us know if anyone has an update, by the way, on the Team League over on uh, round, or, well, place three and four. Let us know who won that. So someone's got to be watching both casts, right? You'd figure. You'd figure man you figure so uh spawning pool coming down from uko and the hatchery as well nothing crazy from him gateway expand out of annihilator too so these uh both these players opening up very standard middle of the road builds that you know are pretty pretty good openers against anything so yeah uh i believe we've seen uko play in the clan war before right correct me if i'm wrong yes here. okay so yeah we've seen uko play one time in our master clan where we did for fifty dollars but i don't believe we've seen annihilator just yet so huge shout out to annihilator uh for coming and playing on the nidus i think that's pretty badass dude mad props to d life they've always been more than accommodating to the nidus so that goes without saying they're pretty hype um, so i have to see a couple of queens coming out at the hatcheries now really this is just about as kind of passive and standard as you get this one overlord is going to be able to peek and see that the gateway is building something and that cybernetics core is researching too so or uh warp gate is researching too so he will get confirmation of what he's going up against yep it's always good to make sure that they're on a second base and you don't have to deal with some crazy one base stuff that's when i start freaking out when you fly over there and there's there's no base there you're like oh shit time to start scouting uh, but yeah, nothing cheesy or proxied or anything, man. In fact, uh, Uka's about to take his third already. So we're off to a you know very macro game, which is cool. I always like it when GMs uh, duke it out there at some in-game stuff. It provides some pretty nice game. So. Yep. Absolutely, man. So the third base coming down from Uko. A couple of lings running around getting the scout out. This adept doing his best to chase it down with the shade. Jackson joining us in chat saying, pretty sure I've beaten this Annihilator guy. Just kidding, I don't play anymore. Damn, dude, are you serious? Or... I can't tell if people are memeing her anymore, or I'm memeing right. or not anymore. Everybody hates this game on some level. Like I can't tell who's telling the truth. You know, they always. <laughs> like, that, they always that. Sure. It's like that shitty fast food joint that you love. You that you say, oh, I'm never eating that again. You always go back. I know, right? It's all good. Um, resonating so blades though coming down. So nice. I like this, man. I I want to see like a seven gated depth all in. Like, <laughs> come on now, yeah. be aggressive down dude we got a best of five so he can kind of throw or gamble a game away i'd like to see it as well so uh just is trying to get him to not quit so they can get their ace all right that's fair too man i'm not even gonna knock that point <laughs> like that's pretty legitimate reason so right, the robo so does come down underneath the uh overlord there so nice scout from uko gonna be able to see that um, probably, did he see, one sec, the Twilight, yeah, he saw the Twilight, saw the extra gateways, and the Robo, he probably has a good idea what's coming for him. Yeah. Um, Zesty says, I don't think Corey played in the Clan War, I swear we've casted him a single time. When did we cast he, him? He, I don't think we casted him, but he played in the Open Tournament, so oh, he has participated in the Okay, okay. but I think okay. this is the first time that we're casting him. I got you. But, uh, but yeah, I, I have I'm on no comment about the clan war. I don't. I. I don't remember. I swear. It I was. can't recall. Maybe I'm just always thinking of him, dude. He's always on my mind. So. You and Zesty. <laughs> oh shit. 
Um, yeah, so it looks like he's going for his third base here, uh, the Annihilator that is, and he's going to be able to get those pylons down for Photon Overcharge to help him with that. Some A good amount of links coming across yeah. the map. You need to see some Adept Warp in, so he could be in trouble. Uh, Toxic Masculinity saying, is it Platinum Diamond players only? Yes, the tournament is only open for Platinum Diamond players. However, we are currently in the show match featuring two GM players. Uh, we'll do the finals of the Plat Diamond after this series. Man, the Bane number. The, bane. the Banes. That's a, well, I mean, this wraparound is going to be pretty immense, dude. And I, and I don't know if adepts are going to be enough to hold it just yet. So, I mean, oh, possibly. Man. But, oh, no. And he just took the shade, too. Like, he's coming off of a shade. So, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get out of there, man. All those adepts die. And Annihilator is in a terrible spot. He's having to, you know, warp in what he can. Looks like it's going to be centuries, actually. I think that's to probably keep guys off of the pylons while he photon overcharges. Yep, absolutely. So the overcharge comes down the Mothership Core as well. He's able to push it back for now, but I think this follow-up is going to be pretty strong when that overcharge goes away. Um, at best, get down this third and start attacking into the natural, but at worst, even just getting down this pylon will be uh, pretty nice here. Actually forces the pro pool. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Fantastic force fields. I mean, even if... Uh, no matter what happens in this game, Annihilator's force fields and his game sense to, you know, use these pylons like he has has been fantastic. The numbers are overwhelming, though, from Uko. He comes in here and takes out both those pylons. He's going to be able to clean up all the probes at the third, man, and Ling's to spare. He's going to get to work on the third Nexus, and, man, Annihilator is crumbling. Yeah, and unfortunately, 10 probes went down during that aggression, so that's a pretty significant amount, and he has the potential to wall this off. Okay, he's going to block it with an Immortal. That'll uh, close the gap up. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't really have anything to kind of buffer behind this. Once that Immortal falls, this is going to be in a rough spot. Okay, so the warp in a 3 add that helps this out, but uh, I think the damage is... Well, no. Okay, I just looked at the worker lead. He's not out of it. You know, he lost the base, sure, but it's still 49 to 47, so he might be all right. But that was some pretty strong aggression, dude. Now it's time yeah, to do absolutely. a dropper, Lord. Oh, give it to just me. Continue the aggression. No, that was absolutely fantastic. Protoss was starting to get away there for a little bit. Um, Immortal's coming out now. Looks like more Adept's going to come out. You know, having a hard time trying to take that third again with that pack of Lings out, man. Yeah, that's making it a little awkward. He's almost in a bit of a contain here. That's a pretty significant amount of Lings, and it's going to be really hard to force that third, uh, especially underneath this Overlord. But you don't have the option of going linear either because there's an Overlord over there as well. Um, Overlord over there. Overlord over there. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to deny this third, no question, right? Like, Yep, and the longer this goes on, the harder it's going to be for Annihilator to get back into this game. He's got to wait for these pylons to come up. He's doing all of this underneath an Overlord, and with this, the Link Surround comes in, and Adepts are good against Links, but not this number, man. Yeah. He's having a hard time here. They continue to swarm. Well, I think a huge contributing factor here is the 1-1, one, one, you know? Like, Links are all right, but if you have Links that have plus one, plus one, and you're going up against non-upgraded units, I mean, that's nice, especially when you can get uh, those juicy, juicy surrounds that we've seen twice now. So very well played from both players. I mean, go figure the GM players playing like a monster, but I mean, I, I got to hand it to Annihilator too. Just holding on right here has been pretty awesome play in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Annihilator has, you know, done his best to hold down this third. The Adept number is starting to get pretty strong now, yeah. man. So I don't want to count him out of this, but, you know, the longer... It, it, it's cost, you know, Uko drones to be able to do this type of aggression, but yeah. he's going up to four bases now, so Annihilator really needs to shove this away for good to make sure that he can grab his third. Yeah, uh, Fumek asking who won Game 3 the last match. Pinecone did. We are currently in the show match. Finals will be immediately following this. Uh, who's opposite of Pinecone in the bracket, by the way? Oh, these links coming in and finding immense damage. Luckily, he, he blocked off right there, so the overcharge could find a little bit of connects. Oh, this! Oh my God, he actually turned the tables rather quickly there. And with this adept uh, warping, I think he just held on rather, rather convincingly, dude. That was huge. Jesus, man. Yeah, for sure. De sent Uko packing. The one thing that I really want to comment on and I really liked about that push from Uko was he had at least one Overlord, you know, filled with Banes and it was flying over the army. So while the rest of his army was engaging, he was looking for a bunched up, you know, units or yeah. or probes or something like that. And it, that's a really fantastic addition to that. I, I like that a lot, man. It looks like though Annihilator is feeling comfortable enough to push across the map and Uko, man, he could be in some serious trouble, but he is rebuilding his Bane and Link out. Yeah, well, he has the upgrade advantage for sure, and as you said, he's starting to get in a lot of lings and 13 banelings, which will help out a lot as long as they don't find these archons. 
Uh, but we have to remember that the warp prism is out, so there will be warp ins with this, and that's a scary, scary number of ad devs, dude. And with resonating Ooh. glaives, like, fuck, I don't know how to call this, dude. I legitimately do not know how this is gonna go. It depends there on these Bane's connects that are coming in right now. They found Archon. Oh, d wonderful play. And by the way, man, uh, there was actually Bane drops or Bane run bys that happened across the map and got 15 probes. So that, in combination with shutting down the army, will force the GG. Yep, and Uko will take game number one off uh, some pretty nice link pressure, but that's kind of how Newkirk goes, you know, I'm not gonna say it's Zerg favorite or anything, but that third is pretty easy to defend there, so I wouldn't rule him out of it or anything, it's just one map, so. Yep. Uh, uh, oh shit, yeah. Sheila Reed. Mm, Sheila! Let's go check in on her favorite shark, guys. My Sheila! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I what? didn't enable betting though, you guys trying to bet on this? I can do it, it really, really quick now, I'm getting better. Let's do it. Enable them. Enable them. Tell them to wait just just one quick second. Who will win? Uh, Uko. Annihilate. Or not Uko. All right, guys, you only have five minutes to get on this bet. Just five minutes this time. Uh, no ten minutes. I'm not gonna remind everyone and interrupt the show match. We're just gonna roll with it. So, that is the one quick break, and we'll get straight at going into Sheila Reef here. Sheila. <laughs> Shayla! I know, like a cool the... opener, dude. That just has <laughs> Shayla swimming around. That'd be pretty sweet, dude. Uh, by the way, so for anyone who does not know or hasn't checked, it is going to be Pinecone versus X Strife awesome. in the finals. So Cool. Good to see. Do we know what race Strife is by any chance? If anyone can uh, answer that question for us, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, I should have looked in channel while we were in lobby, but it's too late. We're already coming into games, so... <laughs> All right, guys, five minutes to bet. <clears throat> All right. Who would you like to introduce, good sir? All right, so our blue Protoss player coming at us from D-Life. Uh, it is Annihilator. <laughs> and our red Zerg player in the top left of Sheila Reef from Revo GG. It is Uko. Yep. Man, I'm sad that I can't find the second shark, dude. She lives always where you leave her, but the second shark is a slippery bastard, dude. He's yeah, really he's hard to find. He's a wanderer, dude. You can't keep him down. <laughs> it's like, I will not be chained. Oh, I found him. Look, guys, see, no other channels bringing you the second shark. I promise that. We brought yeah. this one and Sheila, dude. Look at this guy. First on the scene, dude, and we discovered the secondary shark. I mean, ESL got, or whatever. I don't want I keep calling him that, but, like, whatever it was, there was, like, a premiere tournament, Eric like, a Bond, week ago Bond that Mines. just saw it for the first time. <laughs> yeah, like, come the fuck on, man. We are, like, the church of Sheila the shark. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. I'm done making everyone <laughs> dizzy, like, trying to find Sheila. I'm sure we'll check in on her one more time, but that's kind of how I like to spend, spend, like, the first 10 seconds of this map, dude, just checking on the sharks. Yep. Uh, but it, on a serious note, nothing too crazy or cheesy coming down. It's pretty standard in the grand scheme of things. We got a gateway coming down uh, for Annihilator and Hatch Gas Pool coming down for Uko. So standard is as standard does so far. Very true, man. Looks like uh, almost you know mirrored from what we saw in the last game. Annihilator with that gateway expand, and there goes the cyber core. So very standard from him and the hatch. I believe hatch gas pool. I'm not 100% sure on those timings, but, uh, so, you know, a very standard opener from Zerg. What's up? Fucking Zesty, dude. Zesty feeling confident for his teammate or clan mate. A clan mate, I guess, is the correct team. Yeah, well, they're on a so. team, too. Shit. Oh, we're blowing minds out here. Which one's more? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's but true, either right? way, Zesty just put down every single doubloon he has on Mr. Uko here. So talk about having some faith in your friend, dude. That's pretty hype to see. It was all a scheme, and Uko's going to split him with Annihilator for losing, dude. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> um, so he's getting that second gas up. Annihilator hasn't dropped any additional tech. Uh, has this pylon down here, so I'm sure we'll see something come in. I want to see some be. late game GM carrier play, dude. Sounds pretty nuts. Yeah, like I wouldn't be opposed to seeing that type of stuff. So, uh, We'll have to see if we get it or not. This Link coming in for a scout, trying to figure out what he can do. Uh, more importantly, looking at this wall, trying to figure out where the wall is on this map. Sometimes you can force a crazy-ass wall and get him uh, to invest a lot up here in the front, but it kind of depends on how they're playing it. I forget that these are GM players, so... There's two sharks, mind blown. Yeah, see? 
See, guys? You thought we were fucking around, dude. <laughs> all the sharks. So, uh, Robo Bay does go down. Twilight down. Keep an eye on how many gateways come down behind this or if a dark shrine gets built. But it most likely will be a two-base pressure uh, with some sort of gateway unit. Yeah, I'd imagine. Resonating Glade's coming in as well, so it's kind of leaning towards ad depths here in the beginning, but that's not unusual um, at all. So, everyone talking about the sharks. Yeah, guys, I won't do it too much, but I, I like to just find them in the beginning because people don't know about them. <laughs> it's like, hey, guys, check this shit out. Spread the word. Yeah. Tell everyone you know. That's Sheila right. Reef, put more shit like this in next maps because it makes stuff awesome to Kaz. This map is really awesome. I can see why some people don't like it because of the rock positioning out in front yeah, of the yeah. natural. But I mean, I really do enjoy all the stuff on this map and the way this map looks, you know? Yeah, like gameplay aside, this is my favorite map in terms of like aesthetics or whatever. But yeah, I, I guess people are arguing that the third makes it a little unfavorable, but I don't know. I'm not good enough to where small, minute things like that matter. When I lose, it's usually because I did something stupid. Like. <laughs> disruptor or something like you know i don't know it's the last thing i blame is the map so oh uh, so, yeah there's a lot of production gearing up here this is an insane amount of warp gates and gateways but it's all being scouted here from Luko. so it's not going to catch them off guard it's just gonna i don't know that's a shitload of production yeah for sure man so overlord's getting a really awesome scout seeing exactly how many gateways are going down and that the twilight council is researching something uh, more than likely can read into this that it's going to be, you know, adept resonant glades too. So it gives him yeah. a lot of information to go off of. Yep, for sure. He's got them GM reads, so he's very aware of what uh, Zorbag, I think that's how it goes that. With the follow. Thank you very much, sir. We definitely appreciate it. We got like 10 or 11 so far tonight. That's awesome. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that follow. Uh, we have a lot of content planned in the future. So. Oh shit, man, this warping is going to be pretty significant. Now that Resonating Glaives is finished up too, these Adepts are just going to have their way with all these links. Uh, the Bane's yeah. coming in though will help out a lot. Oh, nice the splits. splits. Yeah, yeah GM really splits. nice splits coming out uh, from Annihilator there and continuing to split, just maximizing the damage. You can see that, man, Uko really had the numbers, but taking a favorable engagement Jesus. there for Annihilator. Yeah, that was impressive, man. Like, my mind is just blown being just a lowly D3 when shit like that happens. It was so fast. Oh, the Banes found really good connects there. Uh, that went very favorable for Uko, but still, just the Adepts push on through here, man. So uh, Uko's going to step back and try to get a couple more Banes coming in, but this this third is looking in a rough spot now. Yep. Oh, another Warpin is man. fat behind that, too. More Warpins and Adepts just as the numbers rise, man, they start to get incredibly dangerous. Fantastic split, but the number of Banes is just crazy, dude. Uko, is, this is insane. Yeah, and he's trying to get that warp prism down too so he can shut down the aggression behind this. Oh, but uh, everything falls but the queens. Holy shit, this is a scrappy game. We got these two adepts over here just attacking the hatchery. If they were able to come team them up with these other ones, they could focus fire down all this shit. Uh, but I'm really liking Annihilator's position now, dude. That was some pretty significant aggression. Uh, but now that he lost the warp prism, it's looking like he's going to slow his roll a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it becomes really hard to reinforce on the spot. You can see that, you know, he was just a couple, maybe one more uh, round of Warpins away from yeah. crushing through what Uko had. But Uko here, man, he's on the back foot too. He knows I need to just build Banelings and make sure that I can bust through this. But with good splits, man, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know, man. This is going to be crazy. These Lings might be able to do the wraparound, but as you said, this looks just phenomenal, dude. Uh, the Queens, though, are starting to turn the tide, too, by focus firing down these Adepts. Oh, the Banes found pretty favorable connections, softening up all those Adepts, but they're just not falling. Jesus, this yeah. game, dude. This is crazy. Yeah, Uko has continuously had Banes, though, so, I mean, he's always had them. I feel like this is the difference between a GM player and a lower player, you know? Like, a lower player would have kind of just succumbed to the fact that they were getting attacked over and over again and not had Banes, but Uko keep making sure his economy is where it needs to be. You can see he's on his last legs, though, man. He can only probably do one more of these Bane busts. Yeah, and if he doesn't get all these down, he's going to start losing Queens, which are, I feel are, like, the real meat of this backbone here. So, yep. Oh, yep. shit. That was really good splits again, man. I don't know why we're surprised about a GM player doing GM things, but it's just really fun to see. Uh, but unfortunately, he lost oh, all of his wing wings, and now it's just a couple of queens here that have to defend, like, 30 adepts in a warp prism. So Annihilator may have just tied things up here, dude. That was pretty strong. Yep, we'll have to see how the reinforcements are, man. But Uko pretty much has no money. I think this is fantastic. Another round of uh, adepts is going to come in. Likely some zealots with that, too. And I think that may be enough. Annihilator pushing up in. Some roaches come out, which will help, dude. They have a good, you know, backbone of health. 
But, uh, more, dude, I don't know, man. Annihilate. I don't know how to call it either, yeah. Gateway. Yeah, this is nuts. It's a great game, dude. I was like, with roaches, will he be able to hold this? But fuck, I don't know how to call it, dude. Like, my D3 mind cannot comprehend. There's six roaches coming in, but there's workers coming in behind this, too. So, man, what a crazy, crazy play here, dude. This has been a phenomenal game. I like this is the reason why we do show matches here, because it's just crazy games like this. Yep. This is awesome. Fantastic play. Coming out of uh, Annihilator and being aggressive, but really amazing play out of Uko as well, man. We see the GG go up. Uko doing his best to play defensive, man, but just not enough. Very well played to Annihilator. Yeah, that was an awesome game, dude. And really fun to cast. Just continual, continual pressure with the parade of adepts coming in behind it. So, um... Annihilator saying, for fuck's sake, my prisms, dude. Yeah, that was the one thing that he was doing really good, was using all those queens to snipe down all those prisms. So Yeah, for sure, man. All right, uh, so... so Belshir? Yeah, we go into Belshir, tied up, 1-1. One, one. Hype. When I tell them to morph, they spend two seconds decelerating. Oh. Oh, God. Uh, Nailbiter, oh. yeah. I wanted to run down all the followers, but these guys are just ready, so... I know, right? Remind we'll me to do it, it the, the finals. finals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, so we'll go into Belshir tied up one to one in this uh best of five for ten bucks. That was a good game though, dude. Like I'm all pumped to see how this shit's gonna go. Both games actually. Like we're pretty hyped, so Yeah. Yeah, man. That <laughs> was pretty nuts, dude. And we're starting to go into a series here, so no clean sweep for anybody. Yeah. Um Uko definitely be able to hold there, dude. I really did. I, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a little nervous for Annihilator. I mean, in that first game, especially, it looked like Uko just had more stuff and yeah. constantly kept him off that third. Annihilator, though, really showed his resilience in that last game, and Uko still looked like he had a lot of stuff, man. So that's kind of where I'm a little nervous for Annihilator, but he clearly showed that he can, you know, carve through it with some pretty creative builds. Oh, yeah. I don't know the MMR um, discrepancy, but I think it's only around 50 to 100. So, I mean, that's somewhat significant, especially given the level that that they're at but it should be somewhat of an even match uh if you take like all salt memes aside from like race like balance stuff but we won't even get into that because i'm only d3 so it should it should be a good fight is all i'm getting at um yep. either way the scoreboard is not up yet let me do that okay so our player from rebel.gg in the top left hand corner of the map the red zerg it is uko did fucking Zesty lose all his doubloons? All of them. 1,300 doubloons. No, no, no. He bet them all Oof. on, on Uko. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Um, and, sorry, who did you who did you introduce me to? It's your, your uh, Annihilator. Uh, and his opponent. And he bought him right of Bell Sheer Vestige, man. We're getting off to a great series from D-Life, the blue Protoss. It is Annihilator. Uh, sure should I says I gotta catch the VOD guys. I'm falling asleep in my chair. Good night, man. Thank you very, very much for admining. Everyone go thank him by following his channel. He puts on a great, great stream. And all you have to do is click on his name and hit follow. It doesn't cost you anything and it would help out the scene because he's a great streamer. And he's involved in like two or three, four different organ fuck, I don't even know. Seventeen three, yeah, different three organizations. Or four, maybe forty even different StarCraft two organizations. So Please, please go follow the man. He's doing a lot of work for the scene that we're all a part of. So, For sure, man. Uh, yeah. I just got to give credit where credit is due. No, um, I, yeah, I couldn't, yeah, I can't agree with you more, man. Like, the dude is awesome and definitely deserves his due. So, please, please, I know he said it, but go follow him. Yep. Um, we have, this has just been like three games of standard, standard openings, man. Oh, and I want to hit on this too. Uh, Kaye threw us a host with like seven to eight viewers. Thank you so much for that, Kaye. Kaye was casting the final of all in the Knights team league. Uh, we, we weren't able to catch it because of this tournament, obviously, but let us know an update, Kaye, who won. And thank you for picking that up. That's pretty hype. <clears throat> Kender X and Paper Plate 5. Thank you very much for your follows. You guys are awesome, and welcome to the Nidus. Yep, Swag says he's about to take off as well. That was our other admin tonight, also a streamer. So the exact same thing I just said. Hit his name, hit the follow button. It costs you nothing, and they're both out here doing, like, volunteering their time for StarCraft. That's kind of cool. Yep, these are guys that could be playing in it, but they want to yeah. make sure that they can answer your questions and help you guys out too. They make sure to ma message uh, the show match players, they've gotten show match players when the show matches have fallen through before. Yep. So, man, they definitely are awesome. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, and thank the, you guys the for the coolest. 
What's up? Oh, I was just saying thank you guys for the follows. We got a double follow right there. Oh, yeah, for sure. The double double follow. Double, what is it? Yeah. Mean? Double follow. <laughs> Um, so there's one adept coming to be able to come up here, you know, just poke in, see exactly how many lings are being built. It's going to get the shade away, though. Yep, this is more of a scout than anything else. Oh, it gets surrounded, though. You're not going to make it out of here alive. I imagine when an adept does that, like you saw it, he shaded back towards, like, his base and then started walking in a Zerg's base. That's like when somebody goes for, like, the no-look shot in basketball <laughs> and just whiffs it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they hit the referee in the face and shit, like, not even close at all. He's like, yeah. don't worry, guys, I'm going to flash out of here. And it's just like, nope, no, you're not. It's oh, funny. shit. <clears throat> so There's Kaye. Nice to see you, man. Thanks for the host. It uh, looks like that stalker got to block it. Oh, oh. shit, nice. I don't know, yeah, though. He's probably going down. There, dude. Yeah, if he goes down, they could spell trouble here. He's actually going to let him in. Oh, no, he let him in. He's going to have to pull his probes now. Shit, dude. Annihilator in some trouble here as the Lynx. Oh, God, even more coming in. He needs to get a pylon down or something there to block it. So he's just by. Oh, God, even more. Oh, like, geez. dude, this just continues to get worse. Yeah, that was just a little bit of a missed micro there. He brought that stalker back, and it was enough to let this flood in. And between the Ravagers and Roaches that are about to come in, I dare say this game is over, but we'll have to see how it plays out. He does have overcharge, so that'll help out a lot. Uh, I'm not going to call him out of it. He's a GM player, but he just lost 11 probes. So there's that. Yep. yep. GG, man. GG, uh, Uko's early Ling pressure has just been phenomenal, dude. Yeah. Game one and game three. just uh, He's managed to find insane damage with it. Yep. Okay, so Kaya gave us an update on all in the night. His team league lit took uh, third place by winning four to three. So that would mean D Life took first place, All In took second place, Confit took third place, and Lit took fourth place. Uh, congratulations, guys. That's pretty badass. All right. So where are we at? Cactus. Yep. By the way, toxic masculinity. Thank you very much for the follow. Yeah, I'll run down the list afterwards, but we got a lot of love tonight. Thank you guys very much. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that follow. We do a lot of content, so. Uh, what is that? Cactus? Cacti. Cacti! If you don't like what you see, leave. <laughs> then I can't help you. Oh, we got a triple, though. That's a good point. Blizzard is fraud. Triple rainbow! What does it mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Uko is currently up. Uh, two points. Or one point, actually. Two points to one. That I meant to say one thing, and I said the other. So. It's been pretty good, The man. triple threw me off. Good. <laughs> I wonder how Annihilator's feeling after that game because that's something where it's like you didn't necessarily lose because the other player was, I don't want to say like better than you, but like you kind of lost because you weren't able to plug your hole. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, I don't know if you feel better about that game or kind of more frustrated about that game, but like he didn't lose because, you know, the other dude macroed harder than him or something like that. Like he was just a little bit out of position. You've got to plug them holes, man. It's true. Yeah. There's a hole there. You got to find it and plug it. Find it and just plug it. That's great. No wrong answer, just get something in there. Do not spot at this point, guys. Uh, but we are welcome into Cactus Valley. Oh my god. Sorry, I'm all hyper, dude. That energy drink's got me fucking going. Hit you, yeah. What was that, like four hours ago, though, man? Like, damn, I don't think they make those things oh, like that. Isn't that how it works? No. I'm up for 12 days. <laughs> it's like one can. Oops, sorry. So let me update the scoreboard and we will jump into this our purple Protoss player in the bottom right hand corner of the map. Uh, coming at us from D-Life, the winners of all in the Nidus team league, it is Annihilator. And his opponent in the top right of Cactus Valley needs one more game to close this out, man. Possible match point from Rebo GG, the Red Zerg. It is Uko. Hey, thank you for casting that, by the way, Kaye. I'm, I'm really sad that we couldn't even pick up the finals of something we were part of the name in, but, like, it just didn't work out, unfortunately. We had a schedule, and we, we had to stick to it, but it's all good. It's really hard to wrangle up two clans, especially four clans, so no big deal. Maybe we can catch the replays or anything, but, uh, yeah, thank you for the cast. I hope you saved the VODs so we can go back and watch yours. So... Oh, uh, yeah, getting down to this game, nothing too crazy just yet. We have a hatch gas pool coming down from Uko, and a pretty early expansion here from Annihilator, too, before even the gateway or anything. It just went straight Nexus first, so. Yep. I think that's good on Cactus Valley. Oh, yeah. You kind of get away with it. 
Oh shit, Swag Syndrome just sold us out the ultimate sellout, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us the or he gave you the website, the YouTube, and the Twitter. Thank you guys. Thank, or thank you yeah. very much for that. That's awesome. And if you guys want to go ahead and follow, subscribe, or whatever the other one is, go ahead and do that. I wasn't gonna sell it out again, but I mean since my man hooked us up like that, you gotta follow like, what, through on that one. What is it all now? Like tweet, post, subscribe, yeah, snap, exactly. whatever, you know, like do all your things at us, like do all the that always, things that always feels weird but like i mean in this day and age it's like if you want to keep up with when we're going live and events that we're doing i mean that type of stuff is the way to do it so we don't want to spam it too much you guys but we want to make sure that if you're interested in getting to events or letting other players know about events that you guys are you have the information you need you know and not only that but like when we go to hit up professional players it'd probably look a lot better if we had a couple hundred followers instead of like 20 or something they'd be like oh these yeah. guys are probably legit maybe i'll go play on their channel so like it really it really does like as much as i hate to say it it kind of does help us out in the grand scheme of things the majority of the community actually uses twitter it's kind of scary how like embedded the sc2 community is and they use it for like scheduling and all that so i don't know like i, I hate doing it every week but it would help us out a lot so Yep. Please don't happen again, man. It looks like we're gearing up for another link flood, and the wall's looking a little iffy. Oh God, yeah, not, dude. Not he like doesn't this. have his doesn't have his mothership core. Actually, it's not even building. He's being a little caught out here. Yeah. And if we go wins this, that's it, man. Like this is only a best of five. So if he takes this, that's that's a GG, guys. So uh, we'll have to see if he's just gonna flood his way and try to get that ten bucks. Honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't blame him if he did. Ten dollars, ten dollars, guys. Yep, absolutely. And it doesn't look like, since he is taking that third, that he's going to go for an insane folk allied eight lanes <laughs> being built for it. I mean, but we'll have to see. There oh, are shit. some drones being mixed into this, too, so how much pressure is about to come out. Yeah, uh, Borktoss saying, I love all of you. I love you, man. The guy found the night is very, very late, but he hasn't fucking left, and I love him for that, dude. Like, yeah, man. He is always down to watch the Nidus, and I love you for that, dude. I see you in every cast, and it definitely uh, goes noticed, so thank you for that. Yeah, dude, snap me, Jackson. I'm looking at you, bud. I've seen you stream, dude. <laughs> Down in the DMs. Um, all right, so streams up since 14 hatch. Wait, what? 14 14 hours? No, no, no. We're not up for 14. 14 hours. hatch? Oh yeah, we've been up yeah. since 14 <laughs> hatch, baby. Like. No, I was confused. I don't know what the hell went down there. That was my. I've bad. been up since six hatch, man. Wings of Liberty. What do you know about that? Like... <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> so. Oh, six hatch. We'll have to see, man. We have Resonating Glaives coming in. He has kind of favored Adepts for a majority of this, but it's, it's all going to come down to that wall. We were kind of making jokes uh, about the Ling Rush, but, it, you know, it's happened. Yep. We are at that stage of the game, so. Oh, God, dude. He's bringing those Adepts out. They could get surround. No, oh, man, those Lings are going back. I was going to say, a little dangerous there, man. Yeah. I don't know. He's definitely playing with fire here. Oh, no. He's going for that third, too, which could spell disaster for him if he's not able to defend it. I'd imagine those Lings are going to have something to say about that. So. Yep. Is it Kai saying 17 weeks? Really? Seven. This is 17 of the Nidus? Well, 17 weeks of the Nidus, yeah, but we took wow. a lot of breaks. So we've probably yeah. only been around for 20, 21 weeks. But yeah, this is Nidus 17. That's fucking crazy, huh? That is, yeah, man. It feels like just we yesterday yeah. we were doing number five. No, I'm just kidding. But for From real, here, man. A few days ago, a only a fortnight ago, we were doing practice casts in preparation. Uh -huh. No, I'm just fucking around. But yeah, dude, it's, it's crazy. So thank you guys for the support, though. It's been it's been a pretty eventful 17 weeks, man. We've we've earned a lot of love in 17 weeks. So thank you guys, man. For sure, man. We you guys chat is an awesome place to be. It seems like, man, we don't have a lot of trolls. You guys are really awesome. So thank yeah. you for that. Uh, we do see some over overlord or some dropper lords coming in, man. I love this play. I love it. Oh yeah, man. You, I mean, we all know how I feel about dropper lords. As soon as you morph it, you already have a fan in me. We'll have to see if he's able to find damage for him, though. The one thing that I really like about Annihilator's position is that he has this pylon up here. So between that and Overcharge, he might be able to shut down a drop. We'll have to see. Uh, here we go with Uko's drop play, though. Oh, man. Can he do it? Oh, Both Overcharge coming down. Double Force fields are pretty good, dude. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so these links. Oh, he's going to come and drop. Oh, man. It's just brutal. And that's what I was talking about earlier. I love the addition of being able to drop on the army, negates the force fields, and the third will essentially fall here. Yeah, that was huge. And as you said, those drops were very key there. Uh, just kind of completely destroyed the army after the links round happened too. So I'm going to have to try to incorporate that 
into my play. I mean, we just saw Dunn should be easy, right? He's only a G. No, I'm just fucking. <laughs> no, <laughs> I like the way. Yeah, no. So I'm gonna go on ladder and just yeah, do no. this, right? I can do like... this exactly, dude. Now that I've <laughs> seen it once, like I got this guy. No, nah, but this is starting to look pretty scary. He's got a shitload of links coming down into here to the natural, and the scary, scary drops coming up in the main. Ooh, good force build though, trying to separate a little bit of this DPS. Oh, a little too strong though, man. That Ling flood has begun, and Annihilator will call GG. Oh shit, maybe we'll all learn how to defend this properly. I know, right? So, what was really interesting about that is Uko... Okay, a slower third. Okay. Apparently. But Uko brought those dropper lords up into the main, and that made it so that those uh, sentries pulled 